what's up YouTube welcome back to the channel we got another tutorial today this one's gonna be a super full in-depth video so make sure to sit back relax take out a notepad if you want we're gonna be doing a mullet uh, he already has his mullet growing out it's been over a year so we're gonna be cleaning up the top and showing you guys how we cut the sides and do the taper all right so it's gonna be an in-depth video so make sure to you know take some notes and learn from this so first what we do I always like to just evaluate the client's hair. I already been cutting his hair, so I'm just combing through his hair, getting it somewhat in the position that he's gonna be styling it, so that when I cut it, I can cut into the way he's gonna style it. Now we go ahead and start off with our bald guy line. Go ahead and going from the top of his ear to the end of his C cup or the bottom of his vertical bar, and we're gonna bald that out. I'm using my Gamma trimmers with the hitter blade on there. Follow that up with the bronze shaver. We're gonna really be balding him out, all right? First, uh, first step is gonna be with our one and a half guard. This is on the wall system. This is my Ergo Clipper by Gamma. And we're just cleaning off bulk right here. We're just leaving enough room later on so when we come to clip over comb or scissor over comb, we still have enough room to blend the top into the sides. Because right now we're gonna give him like a nice flowy on top into the mullet. And then our first guy line will be with no guard on there. And we're gonna do blade completely open and then we're gonna close it down halfway, go up a little bit more, and then close all the way and remove that bald guy line. His hair blends pretty quick. He has very light hair. So when I go from, so now we're using the one guard open, and then we're gonna close it. And once you see that, you're gonna see it's pretty much blended out. We don't really have to use the half guard, but I just go over it just to double check and make sure it blends out nice. So now we have the one guard, we went open to blend into that one and a half guard earlier. Now we closed it down and we're just gonna line up that spot. Like I always say, the one guard is the bridge between the half guard, I mean between the ball, the blade open to the longer hair, right? So it's gonna bridge that and make it lighter so that when you come with this half guard, it'll smooth it all out. So right now you can see everything's blending in together. Now all we have to do is deal with going into the bulk, all that long hair, which we'll come back follow up later. This is a little bit older video, this isn't current, so I've changed my te uh, fading technique, but I went with a three guard, just so I have enough room. Because usually, uh, for me, my finger's width, a three guard will blend into my finger over comb, or any type of scissor work, about three, three open. So that's why you go to the three, then I'll go back to the two, and after that, you've gone through your whole system, and now all you have to do is do your detail work. See what spots are dark, you already know what guards you went through, so as you keep getting reps in and keep doing more and more, so this is the two guard. So as you you know get your reps in, start fading more, you start to understand like, oh, one guard open will blend this perfectly. And then if you, if you notice not cutting, you close it down. And then if that's not cutting, then you go to your half guard. So the more reps you do, it'll become more easy. So people always say like, oh, how'd you, how'd you get so good? Or you've only been cutting for three years. Just put reps in and learn as much as you can. Watch YouTube videos. It's ironic that now I'm here recording YouTube videos and teaching you guys, which is a blessing, honestly, and I really appreciate all the comments. So if you guys are new to the channel and you guys like the content, make sure to subscribe. It helps me out a lot. Make sure to like, comment down below as well on what kind of haircuts you would like to see or what type of content you'd like to see more of, or if you have any suggestions or clarifications, hit me up in the DMs on my Instagram. I get a lot of DMs, but I will answer everybody and just give me time. But right now we're just doing some scissor over comb just to line up any dark spots from the one and a half guard all the way into that three and then into the long hair. I really like to do scissor over comb. It lines up the hair and you're very you're really in control of how much hair you want to take off. So I really like that a lot. Now we're gonna switch over to the other side. So what you do to one side, you're gonna to do to the other side. So go ahead and pin up the hair so you don't cut any of that long hair. Comb it through, get into the direction that's gonna flow in. And this side, you're gonna notice that my fade technique's a little bit different than I did on the other side, just my steps but we still get the same results. So when it comes to cutting, this is the beauty of cutting hair. It's an art. You could do it however you want. You could do the whole haircut with scissors. You could do the whole haircut with no guards. Like you could do anything you want to achieve a similar look. So take that, you know, with a grain of salt and really um, don't, you don't have to do exactly what I tell you. Figure out what you, like learn from me. You know, you might pick up some little things here and there, but really, adapt to what will make you the best barber if you are a barber if you're someone that just cuts your hair figure out what makes sense to you and then just master that and then once you master that then you know the light bulb clicks and then you're like oh now i know what he was talking about this 
I'm gonna start doing it like this and then my technique might solve your problem or might open up another path for you to really understand you know the blending or the fading technique so what I did there I, I debulked first with a three guard and then I went to blade open to close to remove that ball guy line and then now I'm gonna go to the one guard and then follow along so as you can see I'm using the one guard and one thing that really helped me is keeping that blade on their head and not digging in so the rest of the blade on their head and keep that same motion it's like a C cut motion but all you have to do is leave that blade on their head and really just pick with corners you know use a third of the blade on either side to really blend that in Also, I'm going to be making a newer video or more recent video on my fade technique. Once I get it recorded, I found out another te technique that I really like. It's pretty much similar to some, I mean, I do a bunch of different techniques. I like to change it up depending on the people, you know, the my client's hair texture, the type of style they want, and depending on how much time I have to cut their hair. You know, sometimes clients come in 10 minutes late. And now you got 15 minutes or 20 minutes, depending on your, you know, time. I cut with an hour interval, so they come 10 minutes late. I got 15 minutes to cut their hair, line them up, cut the top, all that. So I might have to change my technique that day and do something that's more efficient, faster. So I'm always changing my technique, but I found a new technique that I really like. I don't have to go through so many guards. I could, you know, use my, my, my trimmer, my one guard, my half guard, and the clipper overcome the rest and I feel like I get a really nice uh, transition and fast which gives me more time to work on you know the beard or the lineup or the scissor cuts because I'm really trying to get my scissor cuts you know A1 so if I can spend more time doing scissor cut it gives me more time comes out better hair flows better so you always learn you always got to try new things and get better and better I've been cutting for almost three and a half years now and I'm still learning I'm still picking things up and I still have a lot lot more to learn so now right here we're just gonna edge up the back of his neck very lightly so it blends in into the mullet so it looks clean on the side and then you see it, it's gonna taper in into the mullet so I think it looks really nice right here and these are my gamma hitters with the p3 blade by uh, three ever since by Astro I have a link down below that gives you a promo code you save a good amount you save 25% on your orders so if you do want to get a modified blade highly recommend it for the p3 blade I've, I've uh, had great results with the p3 blade so I highly recommend the p3 blade on the on the gambas look at this side this side's looking real smooth look at that transition and this isn't even really fully done we're still gonna maybe detail a little bit later after you know we line them up get everything flowing all right now we're gonna move on to the scissor work so go ahead and make sure to saturate the hair and you really want to saturate the hair nice so that everything's balanced you don't want some hairs wet some hair dry some hair you know a little bit damp you want it all even so that you get an even cut and when it comes <laughs> he's dripping on his face <laughs> I'm such an asshole I'll clean it up after don't even worry I get a towel clean them up but you got to make sure the hair's wet all right maybe a good thing to do I used to do it is put my hand in front of their face and do it so that no water drips down but I've been cutting forever so we cool <laughs> but first we're gonna start our guideline right here I took about a inch width uh, length or a section and we're gonna pull that up and I'm gonna show him like how much you want me to cut so I showed him like this is how long your hair is right here because you want me to cut that much and he's like yeah you know. you know we're talking about it seeing what length he wants so I believe you take about that much we take a good amount off yeah, we take about a good I want to say like three inches off his hair was really long so client wanted that length and you always want to talk to them you know is this how much you want to take off because you might tell them they might tell you oh take an inch off 
and you kind of like can you take more and then now you got to go through the whole haircut and cut it again so make sure to really you know show them like is this how much you want to get cut off more or less so we took that first section now we're gonna pull it back as you see I pulled back back my comb I took a little bit more hair than I should have but you'll see your previous section so like as you pull back right now I'm just taking all the bulk out of the way really so as I pull back I see the shorter hairs and I cut and I'm moving that having that travel guideline as I'm going back and after that we're gonna cross check and make sure everything's even and as I go to the back, I'm going shorter so that it looks from short and then goes into the long mullet. So you can really distinguish the hair on top to the mullet. Now we're just going to go ahead and grab more hair. And now you can see the difference. You can see the short hair and then you can see the long hair. I'm keeping everything squared. I'm not going too short on the side so that he has hair that shoots up or springs up. You want to make sure you pull up, see where that guy line is. Keep your fingers slightly angled. You want them pretty much horizontal, but... As you go to the side of the head, you kind of want to angle it a little bit. As you see right there, it's a little bit angled, and then you cut all that extra hair. All right. So really, I always ask my uh, clients questions, like, do you want it like this, or do you like this? You know, we're always talking because they have something in their head. They have a picture, or they've seen a picture, and they have something in their head, and they might ex be explaining it one way, but to me, I might be taking it a, a different way. They might be saying, I want to... They always come in like, I want a ball taper fade. It's like, okay, do you want a taper? Do you want a fade? Or do you, do you really want a taper fade? Which, And then I explain to them what a real taper fade is or what I do as a taper fade. So communication is, is a huge when it comes to your clients. And it sets you apart from a lot of other barbers that I've learned because a lot of clients come in like, well, I never had a barber ask me this question or I don't know how to answer that. And then I give them my professional opinion. They're like, yeah, let's go with that. And then you let them know if they like it or not. So then the next time they come back, you know if it was good or bad but right here we're cross-checking now we went vertically so now you can really see what hair is long what hair is short so you see it's a little bit short in the back i mean longer in the back so we're going to cut that and we're just going to go throughout the whole head until we find out everything's even and once we got everything even we're good and we'll move on to the blow drying and this is what i mean when we're going to cut the back a little bit shorter so that it flows into the mullet. You don't want to cut it too short because then his calyx gonna pop up. So cut it, you know, we're cutting it shorter, but not too short so the calyx doesn't, you know, pop up. It's another way to be. So right here, I put the comb on his head and I bent it. And wherever the comb bends, I'm taking my section right there. And we're gonna be blending the sides into that three guard that we did earlier. So I'm doing a little finger over comb right here, pulling it out. I see the short hair on the top of my fingers from what I cut earlier. And then the bottom of the hair that I see that's short from the three and I'm connecting the two. Okay, everything's like connect the dots. So you take your next section and once you pull it, you see what's short hair on the bottom. You see the short hair on the very top from what we cut earlier and we're just gonna connect the two. Boom, just like that. Connect all that, see, boom. Now that's all gonna flow together nicely. So everything is, you know, connect the dot, do a little. So, you know, we started with cutting the sides. We left enough room so that when we come to finger over comb, it'll blend in. And then I always like to go over clipper over comb after just to really get those little hairs because sometimes, you know, your fingers might not cut every hair. So I go back with clipper over comb to keep that shape so now everything's nice and squared because obviously the comb is flat and you keep, you could really control the angle. You could dig in, you could pull out. So we do that just to really fine tune and refine everything right here. We're just gonna do it again. And we're gonna do it again after, once we blow dry all his hair, just to make sure everything's you know can cut perfectly and flowing perfectly. So we're doing it right here just to take away any bulk and then we're gonna blow dry his hair and then we're gonna double check everything, the top, the sides, all that. And that's how you really get that hair cut to grow back perfectly. So right here, I'm just connecting the sides again. This is just another angle. Just pulling back, cutting what's short, what's long. And this is how you get haircuts to grow out evenly. So, you know, when they come back three weeks, two weeks from now, the hair is going to be pretty much in the right shape. All you got to do is blend into it, do some refinements, and you're good. Right here, I just put a little bit of oil serum in his hair so it protects his hair while we blow dry it. It doesn't do too much because, you know, guys' hairs are short. So there's not too much heat damage compared to, you know, a girl who's blow drying 
lots and lots of hair over you know a 30 minute to hour period or we're just gonna go and blow dry his hair get it flowing so dry hair doesn't lie when the hair is wet it looks great but once you blow dry it then that's when you really see like oh this hair is I cut the cowlick too short or the unevenness of the hair and you'll start to pick it up the more you do it in the beginning I remember I used to watch Basio I used to watch um, all these different barbers and they'd be saying stuff like that and I'm like I don't like I don't get what he's saying and now as you more do it I start to see that I have the eye now for it so this is just your war this is just your reminder that just keep going at it even if you feel like you're not getting it just keep getting at it because it will come one day and once you blow dry so now I look at dried hair I'm like oh wow this is way uneven right here I'll go back in and I'll connect it and make sure it's all even or cut the same length So right here we came back clip over combed so we kind of like as you can see I kind of put the comb in to really pick up those hairs and I scoop out keeping it to the same shape of his head and now you can see it's blended in a lot more nicer and you see the structure and the shape of his head now compared to that right side if you look at the right side you see the hair sticking out a little bit even on the very top of his head you see those hairs sticking up we're gonna come back and we're gonna clean all that up so right now we're gonna get all those hairs you'll see me in the video too I'll step back I'll look at him straight on so it looks good from the you know the side profile right but if you look at him on the straight like you know prof the straight profile of him you'll see hair sticking out that's when you you know look back up in him in the middle step back look at your work look in the mirror and then you know adjust what you need to so right here I'm gonna come back clean it up always gonna double check your work so I always cut the hair wet and then I come back and I double check it when it's dry You can see the unevenness right there. It's a novel way to be. If you guys do want me to do more full in depth videos, um, make sure to comment down below because I usually do faster videos, like 12 minute videos, and I kind of go through it explaining what I need to explain. But if you guys do like these more in-depth videos where they're longer, I won't be doing them all the time. But, you know, if you want me to sprinkle a couple of these into the content on the YouTube, make sure to like the video, comment down below, let me know. I'll start doing a little bit more of these fully in-depth videos that are about 20 minutes to 30 minutes long. Also, I have two um, series I'm going to come out with. If you guys did follow, if you, any of you guys are here for the beer journey videos, I am going to do that. I'm going to start that in June. So that we have about six months of beard growth to go through because i like my beard right now so i'm not going to cut it too short right now but i'll be starting that in june also another series i want to do is uh you guys comment down below what kind of haircut or video you guys like to see and i'm gonna find a client on my instagram and then i'm gonna record that video and walk you guys through and give you guys a tutorial and that might be i'm gonna try getting a videographer and do those lives so you guys see them in action but now we're moving on to his hairline. As you see, I took, you know, made his hairline, just took any excess hair that I needed, cut those short, sprayed a little hairspray. And what the hairspray does is lock in the hair so that when I go to line them up, the hairs are in place and you get a more crispier line. Make sure to blow dry to speed up the time, draw on a time crunch, and then go straight to the lineup. Also, I like to comb through the hair a little bit after I blow dry it, just so that it's in, in its natural state. So we start in the middle, make that first guideline, and then we're gonna move on to one side. So same thing like you know, making your guidelines. You start one place, you connect it to one side, go to the other side, connect it, step back, look what's uneven, strain whatever you need to strain out, adjust what you gotta adjust, and that's about it. Keep it really simple, don't overcomplicate it. People are like, how do you get your lineups crispy? Or how do you do lineups? I, I, I still feel insecure about my lineups, if you want me to be honest with you guys. Um, but you just gotta keep practicing. You just gotta keep at it, keep doing it. I had one client, he was very uh, particular about his client and he was open with me. He, you know, he used to tell me like, hey, bring this side a little bit up or, or you know, give me a little bit of tips. And it really helped me out. He was African-American. He came from, I believe Atlanta. He, was, he got a job out here. And he really helped me take my lineups to the next level because he was open with me and he didn't make me feel nervous. So doing that allows you to get better and better. And you know, just taking your time. 
sit there, start from the middle, connect it to one side, take a little hair at a time. You don't have to go straight in and cut all that hair off, you know, take it step by step. As you can see, like I'm barely tapping this vertical bar and you'll start to see a line. I'm not trying to push him back or anything. I'm not rushing in there, taking my time, letting my trimmers do the work. And that's about it, you know, just make a nice 180 box, make a nice vertical bar, make a nice uh, horizontal line, connect the two, get a nice sharp angle, and that's about it. You also want to trimmer that, you know, hits good. So these gammas with the P3 blades are modified. They're very sharp, so they do the job. As you can see on this side, this side of his lineup is always weird, especially his vertical bar. So I have to push him back a little bit in order, <coughs> excuse me, in order to get that sharp line. Like honestly, right here was good, but I ended up touching it a little bit more because I believe it wasn't even to the other side. So I had to bring it up a little more to match the other side. But if you're looking at it just this side, not worrying about symmetricity, and you're just uh, worrying about you know as natural as you can, I think this was perfect. But you know, some clients like it symmetrical as possible so I had to go up a little bit higher and when you're touching you know you want to use the corner of that blade you want to use the full blade just use that very corner of the blade really pick in there have a nice soft touch don't dig in too much and boom you get a nice sharp lineup and now I step back touch it up again make sure I get any loose hairs just really take your time if you want to you know be a, if you're not that barber that likes to be rushed and you know always feel like you're in a hurry and then take your time produce great quality work and as you get busy increase your prices and take your business serious you know be professional be on time communicate with your clients advise your clients uh, when you keep doing that and you do that over and you stay consistent and disciplined and you do that over a long time of period I guarantee you'll be successful and you'll be doing however many clients you want at a certain price and you'll feel relaxed and not rushed at work because I got into this momentum at work when I first started cutting. I was trying to keep up with all these barbers because I was new. I was trying to find my style and everybody was cutting fast. Some people were cutting fast, some people weren't. And I felt like I had to cut fast with them, you know, I had to keep up with them because then, you know, you talk, you're in the shop, people are clowning, joking around. But then I was like, you know what? I want to take my time. I want to give great quality work, but I need to charge, I need to charge a little bit more so that it's worth my while, you know? Now we're going to throw a little bit of enhancement. As you can see, the lineup was sharp. Now we're just going to add an enhancement. This is just going to take those lighter spots, fill them in, and make that hairline really pop, and take that haircut to the next level. This is what steps uh, distinguishes you from other barbers. I don't always use enhancements. Um, I do it for videos because, you know, it looks dope. I usually use it at the shop too. Uh, you know, some clients like it, some people don't, but I still get a nice sharp line. I'm putting the card on where the line I put, and I'm enhancing that line. I'm not putting the card somewhere to cover up a lineup or anything like that. You're doing it to enhance the line that you created because not everyone's perfect. Not everyone has dark edge ups. Some people are light. So this is what is used to enhance that look and give the client a desired look. A lot of clients come in and show me a picture and I'll let them know. You're like, I just want to let you know that's enhanced. That's how they get that sharp lineup or that's how they get that darkness around their lineup. But some people are blessed and those ones don't even need an enhancement. And when you do enhance it, it looks even, it looks freaking Photoshop. <laughs> but that's how it is. But I'm using my 245 compressor with their die. I, I like their die and their compressor the most. It's cordless, team cordless for the most part. Besides my fast feeds, those are only my only corded clippers. But yeah, that's pretty much going to wrap it up. We still have a little bit more to go through. As you can see, once I hit this lineup, that taper is just going to pop that much more. But make sure to comment down below. Make sure to subscribe, like the video. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I'm always here to help. My goal, you know, the purpose of this YouTube channel is just to give you guys some uh, entertainment, which is the ASMR, the beard videos, but also education. You know, I want to help you guys as much as I can from what I've learned from my experience and uh, give back to you guys because I've had some mentors. I've had a lot of people help me out. So I want to help you guys out as, as well. So all I did really for styling his hair, put some hairspray in there, took a wide tooth comb, and combed it through, and it was perfect. His hair sat perfectly. When the haircut's cut right, you don't need that much product. You know, you don't need to throw a hell of gel in there to slick back his hair. If it's cut right, it'll sit in place just how it is. 
We're gonna take some uh, talc powder just to really clean him off, make sure he's leaving fresh. He doesn't have hair behind his ear, doesn't have hair on his forehead. And then we're gonna spray a little bit aftershave to clean off the skin since we you know, used razors and bolded them out. And that's gonna be about it, YouTube. That's the whole cut. I use, a, I use the blow dry after on cool setting because it really uh, chills out this hair. But this is how my client came in before, looking rough, hurting. And this is how my client left the chair. Bam! Revived. Hair's back in place. He's back to life. He's looking good. He was feeling it. He liked it. This is my boy Jacob. His name's actually Jacob too, so this is one of my clients. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Comment down below. I'll see you guys on the next one, right? I'm out.